Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, run it back. Run it up, run it back. They put KD in there just to get you. You know what? That. It was worth it for the Anthony Edwards part. I'm not going to lie to you. Congratulations to I don't know who. I'm uh, proud of us. I'm well, proud of us. I'm proud of us. We are growing as a show. This is Run It Back, FanDuel TV, Sham Sharania Stadium Insider. My name is Michelle Beadle. We have Chandler Parsons and Lou Will. And we've got a, a, an interesting way to start a show today with scoops. Mm. Right off the top of the show, some shop scoops. Uh, Lakers coaching search, sir. The Lakers have formally begun their coaching <laughs> interview process. I'm told they've had meetings with JJ Redick, James Brago, Sam Cassell. Those are the three leading targets right now. Obviously, we've talked about JJ Redick at length. He's LeBron James' podcast partner, but <laughs> the Lakers as an organization, they've have ha had an infatuation with him uh, as a potential candidate what he could, what his future could look like as head coach uh, in the NBA. Really, you think about Pat Riley making the jump from media to coaching, mm -mm. was it three decades ago, two decades ago? Like, they view J.J. Redick potentially similar to that. As Pat Riley? Th this has been perceived, <laughs> Whoa, say that again. <laughs> obviously, as a LeBron James hire, but in talking to people around the Lakers, um, around the locker room, it should be more of an Anthony Davis hire. That's someone who obviously at 31 years old, he's in the prime of his career. Hmm. He's someone that's going to have a runway here as a Laker longer than LeBron James. And so um, how do they handle the coaching hire? How do they decide, you know, do we, do we take Anthony Davis' input? Where does that stand? I am told this is interesting. Uh, Anthony Davis and James Brigo have developed a recent rapport. They, hmm. they kind of had a little bit of time in New Orleans in the summer when AD was drafted with the Pelicans in 2012. Okay. Um, but right now the, the Lakers... Uh, they've begun their formal process. I think this will still be a methodical process. I love everything about it. That little last part you told me makes me think it's him. It feels better than, well. The James, Bur I mean, the, the, again, if we're going to do seems this like more... hire for Anthony Davis because he's going to be there longer than LeBron, who knows what's happening with Bronny and the whole draft. Is he going to follow him? Mm. It seems like this is the Anthony Davis hire. So the fact that he's now developed a relationship and trust with Borrega, I feel like automatically would give him the nudge there. I love Sam Cassell. I think he's I think he's a great coach. And so for that he, reason, you don't want him to have the job. I, I think, yeah. So I don't want him to take this job. <laughs> no, but I just feel like if, if they're gonna if they're gonna really take care of Anthony Davis and what he wants and needs, and they're already talking, and he's not doing that with JJ and Sam Cassell, it just seems I mean, the writing's on the wall. The JJ Redick thing won't die. It is everywhere. It is. It, it, it's like those three names are talked about, but then it's the picture on the article is JJ Redick. Do you like the fit feels, with JJ and yeah. LA? Yeah. How are we yeah. feeling about that? No, I, I don't. Like I said, I, I think he and Sam Cassell should steer clear of his job. You know, if, if they want to have careers in the NBA as head coaches, this isn't the job for you to start your career and want to grow and learn and become a better coach. You gotta win now. You gotta make an immediate impact when you're the Los Angeles Lakers head coach. And it's gonna be a difficult thing. They're gonna come into that job being criticized before they even step out on the sideline to coach this basketball team. The minute one of these guys are gonna get hired, there's gonna be criticism from that moment on. And so for those reasons, I don't want these two former <laughs> players personally to, to for this but here's to be the thing it draft. is the Lakers so they're always going to be in the thick of things to sign free agents to get better they're always going to yeah. want guys to their guys are going to always want to go there so yeah. what if what if it happens and he has a really good first right, two but we years, just you know I mean? we just watched this movie with with Darwin Ham Darwin Ham didn't do a bad job he was he took them guys to the Western Conference Finals his first year his think, second year they were they were a consistent yeah. 9 10 seed they were able to get to a 7 seed lost to a team that they probably were supposed to lose to and you still lose your job so when you when you set a snap like that, what is the ceiling for it's JJ very, Ray or Sam here. Cassell? It's coming. high risk, high reward. It is because crazy. We're talking about be, the yeah. Lakers. Well, what do you like, think about also the, the, their last hire, Darvin Ham, first yeah. time head coach, and that was someone they felt was a leader in the locker room, a guy that could lead a LeBron James, Anthony Davis led roster, and we saw how that ended two years. Mm -hmm. And so, do you go the experience route with a guy like James Brago? We know Sam Cassell, he's been a part of multiple staffs that have won at high levels. Do you go that route, um, or do you go the route of first time, another first-time head coach in J.J. Redick, where there is a lot of potential, you know, there's upside, but then you also it's just, you don't it's know. It just sounds like a silly concept to me to get a, another first-time coach. You're getting another rookie coach as firing a rookie coach. After firing a coach, they got Fair the job. Like, what does this new rookie would, coach yeah. do that the old rookie coach didn't just do? 
Yeah, I mean, Does it just feel like it's a temporary job no matter who they hire? It feels like the, the Lakers also, job is temporary. Would they go and get Donovan Mitchell? They go and get a star player like that? Then all of a sudden, but now they got action. Now, now, now it's not a bad Riddick, job. And when have you ever managed these type of talents yeah. as a head coach? You're, you're barely Never removed have. from it in the first place. So I don't really I Which don't again, get it. again, I think J.J. Redick is more of a rebuilding situation coach where he can get the respect and, of, the, of the locker room. The young guys that looked up to him. When you're looking at an older team that's built to win right now, I don't know if J.J. Redick is the guy that they would want or need or that the players are going to respect right away. I get that ego would, would tell you like, oh no, I want this job. Like if you're J.J. Redick, I would think you'd be like, no, I want the Lakers job. But I, again, if you're being true to yourself, yeah, sure. is that how you want to start? I mean, he, yeah. he's a competitive person. He's a, former, yeah. he's a former player. I'm sure he, he wants new challenges. And you know, obviously him being in this conversation, he thinks he's fit for the job and I'm sure he would want it. On the outside looking in, we've seen scenario after scenario, this is not a great look for up and coming coaches. Time to be alive. Uh, we do have a game tonight, though. Yay, basketball's back. Kind of. Uh, Pacers at Celtics. It is game one, and yep, this is going to be a, uh, ooh, those numbers are large. Uh, Boston favored by a ton. However, yeah. reminder, Six eighties. the Pacers beat the Celtics twice this year. So, Chandler, I think you. we're all sort of thinking this is going to be a blowout. I'm hoping it's not. What do the Pacers need to do to make this interesting? Well, they got to do what got them here. They got to play fast with Boston scores. They don't hang their head. They get the ball out. They get out in transition. Do what gave them success during this regular season. They are an elite offensive team. Tyrese Halliburton is an elite point guard. When he was aggressive in the last round, they won a lot of games. Who's going to guard Siakam? That's going to be an interesting mm. matchup because whoever it is, either it's going to be Tatum or Brown, they're going to have to be a two-way player this series because Siakam was really, really good in the, in the first two series. But when it's Halliburton and it's Siakam and Miles Turner and they're going, they're playing at a fast Carlisle clip with a lot of pick and roll, a lot of transition. It's exactly what they have to do. They have to wear them down because we all know how good the Boston Celtics are in the half court. We all know how good defensively they are, but they got to cause turnovers and they got to get out in transition and do what they do best. Lou, Draymond Green's been talking. I uh, called the Pacers a, quote, regular season team and also said that someone had to make it. It's the East. I mean, that's technically true. Um, look, I've, I've also sort of made fun of it a little bit. I guess I can't make fun of Draymond for this, but are we not giving enough credit to Indiana? Uh, they deserve credit. They're in the Final Four, right? They, they're, they have an opportunity just as well as the other three teams that are there. I think the one thing that we forget about the Indiana Pacers, sure, they had their inconsistencies this year, but they also had injuries. Siakam was out for a bit. Miles Turner was in and out for a bit. Um, Ty Tyrese has, has dealt with some of his... Uh, some of his injuries or whatever, but I thought they got healthy at the right time. I thought they got healthy at the right time. They had their whole group back. T.J. McConnell gave them great minutes. Yeah. Uh, Nim Hart and the uh, and other gentleman that got a Nim in his name. Neesmith. 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 Yeah, it's hard. It's I know. Yeah. So. Like Schiffler and yeah, Shoffley. They, <laughs> Same thing. they got good minutes out of a lot of guys. So I think they deserve the credit where it's due. They're there. Um, but Draymond, you know, he's going to say some colorful things on his podcast, he I'm is. sure, to get people going. But <laughs> they is. deserve a lot more and credit half the battle is being healthy and having some luck. And the Indiana Pacers have been fortunate <clears throat> up to this point of, the, them, of them being healthy. They're also still losing. They lost Benedict Matherin, who was their, arguably their second best player before they made the Siakam trade. So they also had a little bit of adversity. And you can't discredit them just because Philly had injuries. And Milwaukee, they still handled their business. They still beat the Milwaukee Bucks. They still just advanced last round. So they went to the Madison Square Garden one game seven. So you can't discredit them. Now when you're looking at the Pacer or the Celtics matchup, it's a mm. whole other monster. And I look at the Tyrese Halliburton Drew holiday matchup if, Ty, if Halley wants to separate himself from these all these other younger guards that we're talking about the maxis the SGAs the Brunson go do it on the biggest stage in the NBA playoffs right now in the Eastern Conference Finals against arguably the best point guard defender and Drew Holiday so this is a huge matchup for him I hope he's super aggressive and I think he will be um, it is interesting because any article, any sort of betting, anything at all, it, Halliburton's left out. They're taking like the star from each other team. And he's and the he only one still is, playing. And, I he's know, a, it's, and he's an Olympian, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. But on the Celtics side of things, Kristaps Porzingis, we, have a, we haven't seen him on a court in quite some time. Um, his availability for this series looks like what? There's still no clarity. This is still <laughs> week to week injury. It was a, it was a pretty, I mean, it's a non-contact calf strain. It's similar to how Giannis strained his. And so he's doing more and more on the court from what I'm told. They're still evaluating it week to week. But a lot of it will depend on how the tenor of the series goes, right? Like if they go up 2-0, 3-0, in this situation where the Celtics can make sure he, they need him in the finals. They need to make sure he's right uh, when it matters most, especially an injury like that where you could be averse to either re-injuring it or having even more of a uh, catastrophic injury. 
So that's my question then. Do you, A, do you need him if you're Boston to win this series? Or can you sort of play it a little bit to where maybe rest him and keep him for the finals? I think they're good enough to beat the Pacers without him, but for them to win the finals, for them to go and beat Dallas or Minnesota, I think they need to be fully healthy. And they're good enough. They're going to have to get production from Horford, Cornette, Sam Hauser. They're going to really need his shooting in this series because it's just the pace Indiana plays. They're going to want to go back and forth a little bit. So missing your, your stretch big man, your pick and pop guy, your mismatch guy off the block post up will hurt a little bit, but I do think they have enough with Tatum, with Brown, with Drew Holiday, with these guys to still get this series done. Yeah, I think they have enough, but I, I, I'm also on the other side of it where he's got to get some minutes before, you know, the predicted yeah. finals run, right? You know, he got to go out there, get 10, 15 minutes, start getting his footing and getting his rhythm back because you, you throw a guy out there in, in the finals uh, for somebody who's never been there, that's a lot of pressure on them and expect them to have you know, high-level productions, you know. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in this series at some point, but it's going to be much needed. Can I, say, can I say this about this series? It's all the pressure's on Boston. All season long we've been yeah. talking about Boston winning a championship. Yeah. There is zero pressure, zero expectations. They, the Pacers have already blown everything out It's their championship the to lose. This is theirs. Yeah. Everyone talks about it. This, so, so the Indiana Pacers, they're going to go out there. They're going to play even more free, even faster. No such thing as a bad shot. So I, I, I like, I, honestly, if they're going to win a game, I like I like them sneaking game one tonight. with plus, oh, There it is right there. Plus, that's to win the East. Plus 700? Yeah. <laughs> it could happen. You know what? I say go six. Series goes six. That's my prediction. I mean, it could be it could be a sweep. It's it's just so unpredictable just how they play. But yeah, I mean, it's not just going to be a cakewalk like people think. Yeah, plus three seventy. There you go. Put your money. That's just for. You going to parlay game. that, or are you going to make like one big bet? Mm, I don't. I don't. I thought I don't like that just for the game. What? Mm. Why? I thought what's the plus seven hundred to win the series? No, that was to win. Yeah, to yeah, come out of the out. east. Yeah, it's tough. Thousand dollar oh. bet is out. Okay. Well, I thought that was fun. for game one. <laughs> Uh, I'm not the, touching it. <laughs> just like that. Yeah. What are you looking at in this series, Shams? One big thing. Well, Boston has all the, the expectation as far as... Mm -hmm. it's, it's a championship buster season. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, that's the only thing they haven't done. They've been to conference finals before. They've been to the NBA finals a couple years ago when they lost against the Warriors in six games. So uh, they know what's at stake, and, and I, 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 think, I think they're going to come ready for the tax. Um, yeah, now I kind of want, now I'm, you're sort of convincing me to go in on this one. Am I thinking Pacers right now? What's happening? Mavericks, Timberwolves, of course. That would be what we get out west. And uh, just a reminder, the Mavs got here. They sent home the number one seed in Thunder uh, in six. While the T-Wolves, you know, no big deal. Just knocked off the defending champs in seven. Luca or Ant? Mm. One of those two dudes will be playing in the finals. Um... It's amazing, Chandler. How great is this for the NBA? It's great. Just the fact that <laughs> these two guys are in it and there's there so many budding young stars. And, and these two are the two that everyone are looking at now. They're, they're, one of them are going to the NBA Finals to really separate themselves, to play on the biggest stage and compete for an NBA championship. So it's awesome that we're going to get one of them. And this is a tale of two teams. This is a great defensive team against an offensive juggernaut. And defensive wins championships, we'll see how, whole, how true that holds up. Because Minnesota, they've proven they could do both. They have scores. They all know their roles. They can defend. They present a lot of mismatches in this series with just the cross matching with, Mc, uh, with Jaden McDaniels is a great defender. Anthony Edwards being a two-way guy. And really the only the two threats obviously of the Dallas are Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. So can PJ can PJ Washington stay hot? Can they get production still from the can they get something from Tim Hardaway? Is he gonna play more minutes? Jaden Hardy, Josh Green, are one of those guys gonna step up and kind of have a big series? Are they gonna get a lot of action from the bigs and the and the Robs? So there's a lot of questions from Dallas that Minnesota can can they can defend so well that we know what we're going to get from them. We don't know what we're going to get from those other guys in Dallas. <laughs> Why is Lou laughing? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Uh -oh. So Ant-Man and Luca being in the Western Conference Finals, is that the best case scenario <laughs> for the NBA? Sure. I mean, yeah, they're both they're two of the best players. Yeah. Fine. You, know, you, you didn't like how I danced around the question? Yeah. Yeah, He's of a course. politician up here. But even if the Thunder win, it'd be <laughs> awesome to see SGA in the finals. He's also a young star. So yeah, yeah, it's awesome. I think it's but there's like they're not gonna guard each other. I think Luca McDaniel is the matchup. I well Ant Man said Ant Man said publicly he's he's guarding, he's guarding Kyrie. Kai. Yeah. Do you love that? <clears throat> no. Oh, okay. Why? I don't I don't love it. I love no. the confidence. But I do love the confidence. Yeah, if I, I think Luke is gonna guard Mike Conley, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and I think he's gonna not be able to he's gonna not do both. <laughs> I know that it's a fact. 
That's, Wait, not, a, that's not a great matchup for him either. There I'm you just, go. I'm just saying. Listen, <laughs> I, I, love I like Edward. the comment. Edward is, I've said this all season long. This look dude is my favorite player. I find him wildly amusing. He can do no wrong in my book. So I look forward. This is a series. This is the one that we're looking forward to. We don't, the, I know. You know I, mean? I, love him, was right. I love him being being ready to take the challenge. But if I'm if I'm Chris Finch, I want him to guard somebody that where he can save a little energy and have his legs on the offensive end. Oh, so and, then who's who has to get Kyrie then? I have the matchups right here that I think I'm predicting. Oh, right? okay. I think it's gonna be Luca and McDaniel's. Sure. Kyrie and Con I think Kyrie and because Kyrie and Conley. Okay. Which is tough for Conley, but he's there. He might not guard him. Derek Jones is gonna guard Anthony Edwards. He's gonna give a little more length, okay. and then obviously Towns and PJ and Gafford and Gobert. Those those are I think the opening matchups will be. That's what you, okay. I, I don't. They can throw a couple bodies at. Yeah, they got and options I feel, I for feel, sure. I feel like they can throw PJ Washington. They can throw uh, obviously Derek Jones Jr. I'd be surprised if Luka Doncic plays a little bit on him. You know, oh. he's he's got a big build. I think I think he can at least physically match up with Anthony Edwards. I don't know. If, I mean, they switch it, everything. And they're gonna switch and, and, everything, and switch especially everything, with so. Gobert in the game, because he's not a threat to you know to get a switch and to post up. So that that's that's a win for Dallas if they get you know Luka on Gobert and they're throwing the ball oh. in the post to Gobert. Like that that's that's what they want. So yeah. they're gonna switch everything. So everybody's gonna be guarding everybody. I just think that is the matchup game on the line. That's who's gonna guard each other. That is Chandler's matchup. Shams, what are you looking for? I just think these teams match up really, really well. I mean, you think about they have Anthony Edwards you can put on Kyrie Irving. You have Jaden McDaniels on Luka Doncic. And then from there, it's like you, I think they match, they, they've they got the big men. When you think about Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert. Obviously, we know they, Dallas now has Gafford, Lively. Um, they've got different bodies you can throw in the front court as well. So I, I think overall these two teams match up well. It, it's going to depend uh, if the shot making of Dallas, yeah. when you have Luka and Kyrie, can that supersede the defense that we know Minnesota is going to bring? There was a moment the other night. We didn't play for you yesterday. We were saving it for today. Uh, it was Carl Anthony Towns and Ant Edwards. It's like their comedy routine. They take it on the road. Um, they had an answer to a question about needing to lose big. Shout out Vincent Goodwill. Here it is. This is for either one of you guys. It, and usually in NBA history, it says you have to lose and lose big before you win. <laughs> What is it about this team that says we lost got, last year? Yeah, but that, that that's different. You have to lose at a bigger stage. Usually, teams usually. It's the playoffs. Win. We lost last year. <laughs> we lost the last two years. Shit. God damn! <laughs> How much more we gotta lose? Yeah. How much you want us to lose? We've been losing for twenty years. <laughs> I mean, that's just the truth, dog. God damn! God damn! It sounds First, like Chris Tugger from Rush Hour. Thank I, you. I can't. Is that not who that what? is? From Rush Hour. Is that guys. him doing an impersonation, uh, or is that his voice getting real high? I think that's how he normally sounds. He got two voices. He does, like, like Tyrese Halliburton. He does. Yeah. He got two What's voices. up with the two voices? Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, but uh, it is funny. He forgot to turn his TV voice on. <laughs> <laughs> TV voice is needed there. Uh, all right, fine. Who has more to lose? This is an interesting one. They're both young. <laughs> Feels like equal, but. Yeah, it's, it's going to be the Mavs. Okay, why? So, you got Kyrie Irving, you got Luka Doncic. Those guys are, are considered veterans, they're considered superstars at this point. I think Anthony Edwards is emerging as a superstar. Carl Anthony Towns is emerging as a superstar. The other two guys on the, on the other side are already solidified. They already have reputations. They already have um, a standard that they have to live up to when it comes to their fan base and people that look up to them. So I think the pressure, um, even though they're, they're the... the the lower seed in this one, I think the pressure is on hmm. the Mavericks, and I, I think it's theirs to lose. That's fair, and it's crazy just to think from one year to the next. Rudy Gobert trade last year, how everyone was just rolling it through like the mud. Like yesterday, it feels the like. Worst, I, there's multiple people, including myself, said this could go as the worst trade of all time. Of all time. They're in the conference finals, so I don't, I don't I think. I was one of them. Yeah, like. I it, think it, everyone it, was. It I don't took, know anyone who said and it was And on the flip side, think about when Kyrie got to the Mavs last year, how much they struggled, also how they that. were bad. Mark got fined a million dollars for trying to lose just to get this draft pick. Like, And now they're in this, so these two teams they went through some shit to get here so they're both in fantastic spots they both have awesome coaches the Mavs have a lot of good things happening with new ownership and stuff like that so again why are you dancing today man Doing a lot of I dancing. don't think either of them I think if they lose whoever loses I don't think it's like damn what it's, a not waste like it's not like Boston with championship right. or expect no we didn't ex we expected the Clippers the Suns the Nuggets we didn't expect okay. either of these okay, two teams but we're here now and Dallas has been your team this entire I would time. like to I obviously to see Dallas win, but I don't think that. I, I, I want you to stand on business and say. Stand on business, Chandler. I don't think they have more to lose. I don't. Ooh. I don't. I think I would love. I would love them to win. I think they are going to win. I just don't. I don't. I don't think it's a bad season if Dallas loses this. Like yeah, I, I, just say it, Sean. I, 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 I would eyes. say. say I would it. say, Kyrie Irving. Obviously, he's he's a veteran. I mean, when you think about star players, 
Anthony Edwards, Conley Towns, I think those guys have probably a little bit more of a runway. I think Kyrie Irving, he wants to win. He wants to win now. We are not picking on you, Chandler. Oh, it's okay. He don't care. Well, I mean, we are. But, um, <laughs> well, here's a good one because now you get to pick. Lou, you're first. Of all the players remaining in these here playoffs, is there one guy in particular that you'd really love to see get his ring? Jason Tatum. Really? I, I say Jason Tatum because we started this season as huh. the Boston Celtics being a contender for the championship ring. We had them in this conversation this entire season. The other, te- the other three teams that are left, they weren't in, in, in this conversation, but the Boston Celtics were. So them to manifest, do the work, do what's necessary to put themselves in that position, I like it for Boston. I like it for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. See so what I got here? Besides Dallas and Luka, I'd love to see Tatum. I think all the expectations, they've been so dominant for so long and they haven't won the big game. And think about it. We talk about this new wave of NBA players, SGA and the John Mar- We never talk about Tatum for some reason. He's been so I, good. And like, in it, fairness, I think it's personality but driven it's, as well. That's fine. But the expectations for him have been championship or bust for so long because they're that good, because he's that good. <clears> so I'd love to see him get over the hump. I think he's going to get there. He's going to be in the dog fight in the finals. But I'd love to see them finally get over that hump and get one. That's a tough question. I'm thinking about, I feel like there's someone in there that I'm not I even I like them about. all. Yeah, Mike Conley's like a good one. I mean, everyone loves it, I think, him. I think, I think it's going to be more entertaining than we're giving it credit for. I think it's going to fight. Yeah. Lose the optimism. Like the Celtics I just want to be entertained. Celtics did a smoke game, too, in both those series, too. <laughs> get blown out by the Heat and the Cavs, too. So this, the Pacers aren't just going to lay Their Pacers are better offensively than anything that Celtics have faced in this postseason. So they are going to win a game, maybe two games. Maybe there's not going to be a two. sweep. I think they win, too, and I can't believe I'm saying that. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Wizards GM Will Dawkins joins the show in studio bright and early when we return. Run it up, run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up. That's right. Here he is, Will Dawkins, GM of the Washington Wizards. How did we sucker you into coming in? Ah, it was easy. Just a quick text message. I'm <laughs> all here. I, li- I, I <laughs> love that good. for us. Um, okay, let's just get right to the draft. Second pick. Second yes. pick in the draft. I know it's a weird one. Um, where are you on exploring options? Are you going to pick somebody? Is he going to be French? Is he going to be French? I think there's some French options there's at the French top. French options out there. Uh, we're excited to have the second pick. Yeah. It's something for us that we know we're going to get a talented player, no matter where you're at, that high up in the draft. I know people have said some things about this draft, but we're actually excited about it. They have uh, said, it's like you don't you don't agree with the, I don't the really buy into draft that. assessment? Yeah, I think there's less instant gratification in this draft. Like you won't see players in year <laughs> one, year two, make that huge jump and impact on the league. When you look back two, three, four, five years down the line, I think you'll see some pretty high level players that are impacting the playoffs like we're seeing now. For real. I didn't look at it like that. Immediate gratification. Yeah, right? I, yeah. I mean, I we are kind of The wow factor might not be there right away, but if you can have the plan to take the progress, you'll find some good players. Wimby ruined it. I mean, it really, that yeah, was it's a like lot. last year you have the number one pick, you have a parade this year. Yeah. It's like, it's like <laughs> who will be yeah. taking? It's yeah. not the go-to guy. When you, you, guys go also, you guys also have the 26th pick, you said the 51st pick. Yes. There's a kid out there named Bronny James. Yep. Oh dear. Everyone's talking about, does, does, does daddy follow him? Was, <laughs> is that something they're exploring? Because his combine, he actually looked kind of nice. Yeah, I would say if his name was Johnny James, yeah. <laughs> like the media and no fans Bronny wouldn't James. care as much, right. but he'd still be on our radar. Like he's a guy that, did his work in high school, was a high school All-American, obviously showed a, a, a massive resilience to come back from everything he went through. So you didn't expect him to start the year off the way he did. Um, so he finished the year strong, he's finishing the combine strong. So as evaluators, we have to look at him, but at the end of the day, he's just like everyone else in this draft process. See, we've been getting into that. Like He's saying he's a prospect without his dad being LeBron James. I'm like, I, I, I don't think so. I think that part of that for the Washington Wizards, for any other team, if you draft it, if we could draft him and possibly get LeBron the way he's still playing, it's yeah. obviously a, a plus. Yeah, I don't think we look at it that way. I don't. think we're focused on the player and making sure we add the right pieces to the team. Ha. And he's a power <laughs> five guy who went to the McDonald's all game. He's a talented player, so we have to look at him just like we're looking at everybody else. Right. Well, you worked for Sam Presti in Oklahoma City for a yes. really, really long time. What did you learn about team building, about building a culture in Oklahoma City and under Sam? Under Sam, everything. <laughs> um, he's, he's the best at what he does. He was, took me when I was 21 years old in Seattle, kind of raised me through from an intern all the way to um, spending close time with him at the top. So he's someone that is an everyday guy. Um, he really believes in people, and he makes sure that he puts the pieces in order that makes sense. Not for everybody, but for them, and what works in Oklahoma City, and has a lot of patience and treats people well. So I'm very fortunate that uh, he raised me the way that he did. 
So when you think about it, obviously there have been multiple plans to rebuild and, and turn that Oklahoma City team yeah. into a championship contender multiple times. We How do you? This guy to finally come. <laughs> we, we thought we were going to get it done one of those. Years, I would love but it didn't to. Didn't work out. I would have loved to. You know, he's big on cities. Okay. I went to Memphis though. Well, I can, so I can, <laughs> he needs money. There he is. I would do just fine in Oklahoma City. Um, obviously, for you guys, how far do you feel you guys are away from contending? Is there a year-to-year -year plan, three-year plan? Like, how do you view you guys? Yeah, I, I, I know this. We won't skip steps. We're not going to put a timeline on it. When Michael Winger and I first came in almost a year ago now and met with Mr. Leonsis, we talked about kind of what it would take. And he granted us the ability to do what we thought was best. Um, when you look at kind of how long rebuilds take, we're kind of in year one this year. But we have a lot of players that we have confidence in that could be there moving forward, and we have a lot of picks and a lot of assets and things we can do. So we're in a good city in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Absolutely. We're, we're building it up the right way, and we won't rush that. Is there a, a department for slogans? For example, trust the process. So, uh, who's in charge of coming up with that? Uh, we're hiring for that. Okay. If you know anyone, let I me know. I feel like that's a, a good young position <laughs> yeah. for somebody to have in, in the building. Do you have any names? Shoot I'm, I'm not creative. <laughs> Shams is not creative. I don't know. And no one up here is creative. Um, why well, why do you hate on me? Because I know you're not creative. <laughs> Would you say Shams is creative? Ah, uh, thank you. Okay. Silence. Uh, <laughs> Silence. Tough. Tough. So we had Bilal Koulibaly on, yes. uh, I think, last week, actually. And mm -hmm. it, it, the rumor is he's the only untouchable. Is that true? First off, you guys tried to trick my guy on, yeah, on the show. Yeah, we did. My bad. <laughs> nice you know what? He was good. He, he was it. good. He caught it. So he, I give him a lot of credit it. for that. <laughs> I would say we have a, a talented group, guys that have gotten better this year. We're going to continue to be opportunistic and look at everything that comes our way. If you saw us in the draft last year, I think we traded two or three times, I think it was. So um, we, we like our crew. We're going to continue adding to that crew. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. So, well, you started off as an intern, I believe, in Oklahoma City. You yep. work pretty much every job you can work in the front office yep. in Oklahoma City. And now you're the general manager of an NBA team. It's awesome. Running day to day. For you, obviously, you had a past, too. I believe you played basketball at Emerson. A little bit. Not very good. What, what, have, what do you feel like all these experiences taught you and, and, and the lessons you learned to bring you to this point? Right yeah, now? I would say I was very fortunate to uh, go brick by brick, like within the organization. Started off as an intern in video. Um, doing some behind the bench coaching stuff and then kind of switched to the front office and got to build my way up through evaluation and then kind of upper management. So I got to understand the job at every level. And I think that's what really benefited me. I got to fold the laundry. I got to rebound. I got to go on the road. I got to drive cars, take notes. So no you job know, too small. That's exactly. awesome. So you know what goes into it and you know that it's all about people and working hard. So if I, I didn't have that opportunity, if I didn't go to Emerson College and Hank Smith recommended me to Sam Presti, who was our college coach that we both shared, I probably wouldn't be in the NBA. So I kept that kind of day one focus from the very beginning. The front office, Eric Spolstra. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Will, one of the first things you did um, as GM was, was trade Przingis to the Celtics. Yeah. What was the thought process behind that decision in trading it? Yeah, so when we walked in, we I was probably had the press conference on June 10th. As you know, the draft is right there. And three of our better players at the time, we had to make decisions on. Um, Kyle Kuzma. Porzingis were potential free agents, had options, and then with Bradley Beal. So what we wanted to do was make sure that we sat down with the players, sat down with their reps, and made sure we did what was best for them. We tried to find a deal that worked for the other team and us. And with KP, uh, as you guys were talking about earlier on the segment, like he's a big piece for them. Um, so we wanted to make sure we allowed him to go in a position that was best for him, that allowed us to go on the track we want to go to. See, when you make a trade like that, though, for KP, are you thinking in the back of your head, I'm making a, a really good team even better that I have to go through, or you don't even look at it like you that? You can't look at that. you got to look around at the options and find out what's best for you in return. And we like to do good deals that feel good for both teams, and I think both teams feel good about that one. Yeah, you mentioned Bradley Beal because then you guys sent him to the Suns. But he had the whole no trade thing, which yes. was huge and probably very difficult for, for guys in your position. So... How, how does that even start? What does it look like the process-wise? And, and are there other teams that he was like, absolutely not? Yeah, I wouldn't say it was um, a complication for us. Okay. I would say once we got there, Brad's great, as you guys know. Um, got an opportunity to sit down and find out what was important to him. And when we sat down with Brad and had a conversation with his representation, it was pretty clear the direction we wanted to go and the direction he wanted to go. And Brad loves D.C., was great for everybody there. But at this time in his career, he probably didn't make sense for where we wanted to take the team. So we looked around, found a spot, and I think he found a good spot in Phoenix, and it's going to be good moving forward. Are you shocked they didn't go further? I mean, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> uh, we are. <laughs> we are shocked by that. What happened? 
Again, sure. instant gratification doesn't work year it, one all the time. It really doesn't. You, you stick with it. I think you saw it in the teams that are playing in the playoffs right now <laughs> in the Western Conference. Like, things take time. By the way, how about this? 30 seconds only get this job, and you have three big ass decisions to make. In the draft. <laughs> Your first two weeks, I was yeah, and you got the draft, draft right around the corner. <laughs> yeah. Then you get CP3 in the BL trade. Yes. And you bring on. You know, you trade for Jordan Poole, which yep. raised a lot of eyebrows with all the, everything that happened with him in Golden State. <laughs> yeah. How did that whole process go down? What were you looking for for that move? Yeah, I think they all look as different trades, but it was kind of all one, packed in one. You got to do the best based on the timing and everything. Um, love CP, had him in Oklahoma City. He really helped start that second wave and really gave SJ that platform to kind of learn how to play point guard and with the ball. So knew what he would do um, in the environment that we had, but I thought at that time, it made more sense to try to invest in a young player in Jordan Poole, who I'm actually excited about. Um, I know he didn't start the year that he want the way he wanted to, but he's still young, still developing, and the way he finished the year is what we're expecting moving forward. So, for where our team is, Jordan was a leader for us, and he's going to continue to be that and a player that's with us moving forward. Such a such a weird end for him in Golden State. Um, yeah. Kyle Kuzma thought maybe he was going to go to Dallas, didn't move him at trade deadline. He mm -hmm. said he wanted to stay in Washington, D.C. So does that mean long-term you're looking at him as, as a yeah. pillar? I would say Kyle's played his best basketball in D.C. And the reason why we are able to re-sign him is when we sat down, he said, I want to be here. I want to be here for what we're doing moving forward. So obviously trade conversations, there's a lot of iterations yeah. that go back and forth. I think with that one, we ended up doing a first-round pick in Daniel Gafford. And you feel good when you can call Gaff on the phone and be like, hey, you're going close to home. It's a good team. It's a good fit. And that's the deal that made the most sense for us. And I think with everything that Dallas did, it worked out for them, too. So we're happy to have Kyle. Um, he's already been back in D.C. a couple of times already All working, right. leading the group. So um, it, it worked out well. Is he the type of guy that the phone lines are open regardless? Like, I guess the rumor was you guys wanted two first round picks. Like, do, are you constantly keeping, I don't want to say price tags, but ideas <laughs> no. in your mind about this is what we would love to get for you? Yeah, this no, I I think we got some guys that people have value, um, and when they spend oh, wow. their time and they call you on the phone, they're always thinking of things. It goes both ways. So we're, we're always aware of what's going on, but we're not selling our players or out there price tagging people. No, that's not it. A lot of people online are saying that the Wizards are the favorite to land Josh Giddy. Is that someone you would you think fits in, in what you guys are doing over yeah, there? You're not gonna catch me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Yeah. the bar. I'm good. I'm not gonna yeah. comment on another team player, but uh, no. Well, hypothetically, I like hypothetically it. speaking, <laughs> there we go, there we go. I, I'll change. I got you. <laughs> My prime, Chandler's prime. Oh, oh God. you take oh, wow. over as GM. Which one of us you're trading first? <gasps> Who can get the most value? What age? My prime was 28. <laughs> My prime is right now. Oh, God. <laughs> the worst. I'm, I'm taking the humility the guy can deal with in the locker room every day. I'm going with Lou. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're staying. Taylor's on his way out. I need the fair. humility in the room. I can respect that. Can you? Can respect can you respect that. That. Yeah, yeah. No hard feelings here. Ship him to Memphis. Ship him to yeah. Memphis. He loves Memphis. He loves Memphis, Memphis by the way. Do you get an off season? Like, do, Ooh. what do you do? Do you go on a vacation? Someone asked me that question the other day, and I was like, my neighbor, actually. Uh, <laughs> Fair Probably enough. not till August. Probably He's not till August. Trying to look out for you, whoever yeah. that neighbor is. He was. I think he just wants to spend some quality time. So hopefully we can grab a beer and hang out. But uh, yeah. as you guys know, June is super busy. We're out here watching some more workouts while I'm out here in LA. Got to get ready for draft season in June, and then July is around the corner with free agency and summer league and. Potentially, hopefully, some Olympic action as well. So we'll see how that goes for our guys. Dude, this has been awesome. We are so appreciative that you came into the studio. I love we know you it's guys. bright Absolutely. and early. It is bright and early. Will Dawkins, y'all. Much appreciated. Will you all. Dawkins. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more. Run it up. Yeah. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Time to go crystal balling. I wish I, wish I had like a thing. Chandler, I'll start with you. How many games does each series go, and who wins? Both series? Yeah, well, let's do West first. Okay, this oh, the West first. Yeah. I got Mavs at Wolves going six. Okay. And the Mavs winning. Down. And the Mavs winning in six. In six. Okay. And I'll take it a step further. I don't know if you asked me this or not, but I got Kyrie winning the MVP. Dang. Well, we'll Dang. get to that, I guess. But go. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the other side, I got Pacers Celtics go five. Five, all right. And I got Tatum winning the MVP. Okay, so you just uh, did both questions in one. Thank you so much for uh, playing. <laughs> uh, it's almost like you didn't look at the rundown. Lou? Yeah. I absolutely did not. So we're going to have a little time to chit chat after this segment. <laughs> look, give me a. Uh, Sorry, Conrad. I like, the, uh, I like the Timberwolves in six. Well, oh, okay. And Edwards MVP. Okay. 
There and you go. the East. The East give me uh, five games. Boston, um, Jalen Brown. Oh. Ooh. You know what? It, it that's it the thing. Because yeah. playoff Tatum right could there. happen. Yeah. I'm going to all ATL team. Um, Jalen Brown, Ant Man. Do you did you realize that the Larry Bird and Magic Johnson trophies were named such as no. the conference MVPs? No. No. I didn't either. There's too many. No, I legit ones. asked today. I was like, yeah. is this a like a black white thing or what what's going on? Here? <laughs> I did. I, so you I think was, it goes to one player who's white? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I didn't know what was happening. I mean, oh, we call. got no whites for the MVPs. TJ McConnell. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is annoying. He could he could do yeah, something with that. Peyton Pritchard goes uh, off. I don't think we're gonna have any watts. First of all, that would be an amazing. I think it would get more news. I did. That's um, what I thought. Lou, out of the four remaining teams, Crystal Ballet, who are you taking to win it all? No. You know who we've been on since the Ripper Snapper. So Boston Celtics, of mm -hmm. course. Like I said, it's theirs to lose. It is for now, yeah. yeah. For it's it, and by the way, we, like we said earlier, I, I'd like to see them get over that hump. They've been so dominant. They've been they've had this duo. Like I would like to see them win and, and get respected and talked about. If they lose this year, <sighs> yeah, with this a, lineup. And I don't know what you do. Ooh, is Zola gone? Do you like, do you, do you shop one of those two guys? Like, what do you what do you do? Has the has the path been clear for them to win a championship? You think it's a, a walk yes. to the to the I'm, trophy? Has it ever if been better than this? If they don't win it this year, when will they win it? Yeah. Like, they have Milwaukee and Giannis and Dame out. They have Joel Embiid out. Like they they just literally like yeah. This is this would be on paper obviously the easiest year for them. They've to played win. hospital. That's not saying it's going to be easy, there. but yeah, like this is. How much, how much more traffic do you need clear for this? Like, yeah, like this is this is their year. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on that, Lou. Best one-two duo left in the playoffs. Let's stay let's stay in Massachusetts. Massachusetts it is. <laughs> Jalen okay. Brown and Jason Tatum, they're they're best one-two. I think Lou is all thing. in here. Oh, he really is. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's these are the obvious picks at this point. You know, like I said, this is their championship year to lose. With everything that's been going on, a lot of the top teams, a lot of the teams that were predicted to still be here, they're gone now. The Boston Celtics are the only team that's still in this conversation that was in the conversation from the beginning of the season. And so, with that being said, you got to go with the guys that are still there. Yeah, it's hard for us to pick the Celtics really then not pick them too as the best <laughs> duo. But uh, Kyrie and, and Luca would be the second best, obviously. I think that they're right there, but it's got to be Tatum and Brown. Okay, so that that's, those are stars, obviously, but we we got to talk supporting cast. When it all comes down to it, they're going to be vital. So of the four teams remaining, who's got the best version of that? The Dallas Mavericks. Supporting yeah. cast. They have the, this is the Luca's best team, the Divas team, the trades they made for Gafford, the draft they're pick fun. with Lively. PJ Washington has been unbelievable. The they're, Derricks. They're, 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 yeah, the Derrick yeah. Jones last series. Well, wow. Like, like, so I think when you look at them, everything Luca's been through, all his teams he's had, this is the deepest, best team they've had. I right. think it's going. It's the t it's the T Wolves for me. Okay. Um, they we, Boston. They got the best starting five, the best team, but not the best supporting cast. I mean, they have the supporting player in the sixth man of the year in Nas Reed. True. So you start there. We talk about depth. They got a lot of guys that can guard a lot of different positions. You got veteran leadership. You got young superstars. You got everything that you can imagine. You got guys that take pride in playing defense. You got depth. You got guys that can come off the bench that can make shots. Nas Reed, he can make shots and play defense on on and play on both sides of the ball. And so I, I, I think it's going to be T-Wolves for me. We do have some That Man Has a Family. I'm looking down it. I believe everyone uh, on looking the down barrel. of this is still <laughs> Let's down. Let's go. Down barrel, yes. What we yes. got here? Uh, okay. Oh, oh Oopsie. Hello. <laughs> He's just fun, Michelle. He is Can't just wait. a blast. Ooh, okay, come here. That's nice. That's Look at Jokic. Jokic is smart enough to know this is a business decision. Let me just get out of the way right here. Yeah, I don't. No. I was just having this conversation. It's starting at USA, right? Mm. Uh, dude, you remember when you were like, he see said he I'm wants at. to start? I, I have no issue. You're going to start him over Devin Booker right now. I am. So let's see how this plays out. MT. Because I do think there's value in what's about to happen in these playoffs. Harden's you have to dying. consider. Look at that. Yeah, whatever. You know, how's it feel? A bunch of people just... Oh, oh, the in Hardenstein again. Injury. Hardenstein. Enjoy but I was Colorado. happy for Obi Toppin. That was... <laughs> Probably felt good. To we should have named this Hardenstein has a family. Right. <laughs> He's getting dunked on every clip. Half black family. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Lou, we've already <laughs> discussed it, and I showed you proof. <laughs> I don't no, know you where I see the picture? I know he's black. Everybody knows he's black. No, first of all, not, not everybody, everybody knows. knows. Yeah, I'm still 50 50 if that's not Photoshop. <laughs> Derek Lively. Yo, what's well, the, no, but then he talks what's about the it. theme here? Oh, what? I don't know. You know what, what the theme is. <laughs> I'm just uh, saying what you say. That's yeah, it. That's just... there's, a, there's a trend I'm noticing. Yeah, we take charges and <laughs> swing. There we are. <laughs>
When did it shift that we're trying to block shots uh, now, fellas? Take charges. Derek Lively, <laughs> second rookie, all rookie team. I mean, this is. Oh my. Dude, that's that's nasty. I, there's nothing. Best finisher in the league. Trying to get Will with the giddy. It's just pretty. It's, it's good to see Kyrie Irving in and Dallas. He's just. He's just back. a different dude right now. At peace. Right? Look at him. You know what I, my favorite thing was? I is like you know you can see people's houses on the internet, and it's like what you get for your money in Dallas versus a lot of the other countries. It's like ten thousand square feet for three million bucks. Yeah. My Real realtor play. is Daniel Gafford's realtor. And nice. If I would tell you with the size and the price, he just got a house in Dallas. Is, it makes me ill. And no state tax. It's I know. Ridiculous. Trust me, I know. We'll talk about anything. On Did you say show. we're taking a break? Oh yeah, oh, we are. No, we so are Daniel Gafford's <laughs> address is. <laughs> <laughs> if you take a right, would you take a quick break? We'll be back to give you all of those specifics when we run return. It run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Is this real? I don't know. Old face, new place. I think this is real. We almost got and we almost so Conrad. much trouble. <laughs> what in the hell? Conrad <laughs> Bartholomew, never again. Paul George. <laughs> What were you saying? It, uh, it would have been He me. has a 44 <laughs> million. Dude, that was almost a disaster. A $44 million player option man, to stay with Gosh. the Clippers. But let's take a look at some of the other players. Love that money. He could go just in case he's thinking about it. First up, the Sixers. Uh, they seem very, very firm. They, the fans, everybody, that Tobias Harris is out of there uh, after his playoff performances. So... Would that be a good fit? Yeah, it would be a good fit. And Tobias Harris, I think, is for sure out of there. I think his time is done. I think Paul George would play well with Maxi, which will be. And then if Man. they somehow get him, now we're looking at them. If they can somehow stay fully healthy, the That's Sixers the would be one. a real threat next year. I like that a lot. That's kind of crazy. I was going to say Chandler from his educated opinion. Paul George ain't going nowhere. I don't think he is either. He's a Southern California kid. He's His roots are here. His family is here. Um, his parents have an opportunity to watch him every game, go to the comfort of their home after those games. His kids are going to school out here. Um, he's does planted seem nice. his podcast flag out here. Paul George ain't going nowhere. So not only did you not say it, but you just rubbed my nose. I was just going to let you finish. And you just killed the segment. I was going to let you finish. I well, you know, go It ahead. doesn't matter, Luke, because I'm going to ask you anyways. But let's just say he has a falling out with the entire city of Los Angeles and decides he hates it out here. What about the OKC? Yeah. I was about to say a little OKC reunion there sounds go. good to me. Okay. Oh, all of a sudden. Wing scoring. Now we're playing hypothetic. Hypothetic. Let's do it. <laughs> if we go do hypothetic, I like OKC. I like a reunion in OKC. That would be the one that makes the most sense to you? Yeah. Like, it kind of okay. reminds me of Dwight Howard. You know, when he went back to the Lakers, got his ring. Paul George can go back to OKC and kind of wipe the... The dame, I mean, <clears throat> bye bye meme away. They would be fun still. The problem is you stand in LA, Lou, and you know it. Can I ask you this though? <laughs> is he? <laughs> you guys are jackasses. Uh, would he stay? The is... Podcast is planned here. By the way, I love that you did the podcast as a yeah. as a yeah. fighting like, like point. He, I've been there before. He's he, he's whole committed set. to it. Yeah, it's a like it's his the whole set. Thing. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, but you know you can do that and probably for cheaper. Absolutely. Else. Um, okay, see, he probably get a uh, warehouse. I yeah, just... I was gonna just say, is it? Better for mm -hmm. him to stay with the Clippers, like professionally. Mm -hmm. I understand personally, we all have places we want to stay, but as I far do. as basketball goes, I it's think not the, the best. I think the pros outweigh the cons. Okay. I think the pros outweigh the cons. You still got a really good group that can do some things. You're going into the Intuit Dome. Um, the fan base is excited about having their own home. You have an opportunity to continue your legacy as a, L a Los Angeles Clipper. That door is wide open for jerseys to get retired, for legacies to be built, for championships to be won. This is a clean slate for Paul George. I don't see why not. I like it. Let's move on. DeMar DeRozan, friend of the show. Hey, y'all. Uh, a lot of trade conversations. His name seems to be attached to those uh, quite a few times. However, looks like he's got a lot left in the tank. Unrestricted free agent. So we'll start with out here in Los Angeles, the Lakers, Chandler. How would DeMar fit there? I don't love the fit. Personnel-wise, I think he's a great player. He's the master of the mid-range game. I think they need shooting. They need spacing the floor with Anthony Davis, with LeBron James going downhill. <clears throat> clogging the paint. I'd rather see a Clay Thompson. I'd rather see someone like that here. DeMar is a perfect fit in Chicago. There's other teams I think he can do. I, I, I just can't see him in L.A. It doesn't make sense to me. I think, it's, I think it's a bad fit, but, you know, this is a deal that's two years too late. I think they should, should have done this the first time that it came up a couple of years ago. So I like him either staying in Chicago or, or you know, maybe come on down to ATL. Mm. Oh, we're maybe doing come this? On, yeah, maybe come on down to ATL. We pair him up with Trey and DeJounte, and let's see what we can do with that. I don't see that here. I'm like, I know, I don't see it on my, my hypothetes. <laughs> um, they, we do have other big market teams, though. New York Knicks. Is that, I mean, I'm looking at DeMar, like, is he going to love the Tibbs way of life? 
No, no, no. He's too old right now to be <laughs> going to that riff raff. I ain't asking. Riff <laughs> raff. No. Riff raff. There was that word again. Ain't going to the next. No, I don't think. That. Okay, okay. How about Miami? No, nah, again. Really? They, yeah, but they got some shooting to put, to put around different. him. Him and Jimmy. Hero. Is that a fit? Got, yeah. No, is that but too much I, shooting? I like is that even a Hero, thing? Duncan Robinson. I like to shoot around them. They're not going to pay Martin. To, what, what, he's going to bring in a haul this summer, right? So I could see Miami more so than the Lakers. I'm sticking with dogs. They're not on here. It's not an option. Yes, it is. They're in the NBA. <laughs> barely. <laughs> I ain't doing this with you. I can't. I ain't doing Did this you just say you. barely? I'm, I'm not doing it. I, I got to go home this week. I ain't I doing don't it. Don't be so sensitive, all you idiots. I got to go back to the crib <laughs> this week. You idiots. Uh, James Harden. <laughs> Okay, we're, he just finished out that two-year deal, right? He's got an unrestricted free agent moment here. And uh, before we dive into what we think he may or may not do, the question marks are this. Do we see him willing to take less money if it's to a legit contender? He should. He's so rich. He's made so much money. Like, all he needs to solidify his resume it's as a Hall of Fame player, which he already is, is a championship. You talk about he's never won in the big game. He's always kind of fizzles out in the playoffs. Like, yeah, I think he should take that. He makes so much money off the court. He makes so much money on the court. Like, what, what's not? another deal to him at this age, of, at this point of his life? Like, I think he could really go and fit somewhere. The Spurs, ah, I, I, can't. Ah, I, can't, I can't see this one. But I don't want to jump ahead here to a couple of the other options. I think options, I speak for everyone in San Antonio when I say I don't no. see James Harden and Greg Popovich and the, kind of him being that rebuilding missing piece mm. for them right now. No. And not even rebuilding, like, but like a vet building. Guy. Building, yeah, yeah, yeah building. building. Building from scratch, buddy. Uh, and they're Luke, gonna be good. And Spur- I, I look, I, there are a lot of names that people are like Spurs, and so far nothing's felt right. Um, this definitely does not. I agree with Chandler. Yeah. Finally, that's my long answer. <laughs> look at you guys. What about the Suns? I mean, why not add? Like why we not? Got one big three. Let's try another big three. No, like, does it work? It didn't work in Brooklyn. It doesn't work. It is, you, can't, you can't just go and add this big player and this big name on paper and think it's going to. It's got to be fit. It's got to be style. It's got to be. You have to buy in. So no, he's not going to fit with anybody unless he personally decides to buy in. Well, yeah, I feel like we're hypothetically just yeah, assuming like, that that's part him. of it. It's up to him. He. I think the best bets for all three of these cats to go back to the Clippers, run it back, Dang. go into the new arena with buzz, with the expectations, and. I would want to be in the new. Arena for a year. I just want like a what other fresh, big three is better building. than James Harden, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard? Like that is a good big three. Like we're just gonna go build it somewhere else. Like no, you have it right here. You were hurt this year. Kawhi Leonard got injured. You're up and down. They have enough pieces to compete next year. Stay there. Okay. The grass ain't greener. But hold on, because Shams has told us that Orlando's got the money, and there's that Clay Thompson interest. But maybe you make the argument that James Harden's got a little more left than a Clay Thompson. What about going to the Magic? As a hometown guy, I don't. Yeah, I don't, here we go. I don't hate this. <laughs> no, I don't hate this. James the Orlando. I don't. It's deal. never going to happen in a million years. But I don't hate it. I don't hate the. Funny fit. how he turned. I don't hate. I think they they me. They could use a point guard that can score the basketball to set up Paolo to set up Franz. I this basketball wise makes sense just knowing James Harden, and what he likes to do. There ain't no way he's Are there going. Disney strip clubs? <laughs> there there is Would no that way. be a good a there Disney is. strip club where they come out as the characters uh, and then Disney voila? Should. There's no chance that hell he's going to Orlando. But yeah, I think basketball wise, I would I would actually think that would be a good fit. Lou, you're just shaking your head. Why? I, I'm just, I, for the first time in a long time, I just agree with everything my guys say. This is not possible. It is a quick little flight to Miami, I suppose. But How about Atlanta? Uh, it's close to Atlanta, too. Miami. Atlanta would be bad for him. Atlanta no, would be bad for him. You played that's in Orlando. The, that's the Atlanta's holy grail. Some late scratches. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not talking on the court. That does it for us. We, uh, we are done. Enjoy the games tonight. Brian Scalabrini joins us tomorrow. Ooh, uh, something's better win. Run it up. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back.